All right, good afternoon. I'm James, uh, Colonel and Hypervisor Engineer at EC2, here with my colleague Alex. And we are, we, the discussion we'd like to have today, LPC is about discussions, is about live updates and specifically how do we persist um, IOMMU state uh, across KXX so that we can allow VMs with device pass through when you've got a hypervisor running to be able to continue to do DMA operations to the guest memory while the hypervisor is doing a KXX. So, roughly, yeah, the, the overview, this is what we're going to talk about today. So we just discussed the problem a little bit to make it clearer, the, you know, the problem, then our rough sketch of a proposed solution, which is to persist IOMMU uh, file descriptors and page tables across using a framework called KExec handover, KHO, and also looking at the user space APIs and internals of how we do that, and then have a discussion about are we looking at this problem correctly, and what are the correct user space interfaces to... Um, do these sort of actions. So roughly, if you have a um, guest virtual machine running and it's got some um, persistent RAM, you can k-exec from the one version of the hypervisor, version 8, version B, and QMU can serialize and restore itself after live updates, and roughly no problem, provided you've got some mechanism to persist that guest RAM. It gets more complicated when you've got device pass-through, you've just assigned some PCR devices to the VMs, during KExec, the IOMMU is disabled, translations are disabled, page tables are lost, so any ongoing DMA will be lost. And this is a problem, because the guest VM has initiated some DMA, so you need it to keep running. And yeah, so that's, that's the problem, is DMA breaks, and so the question is, how do we um, allow DMA to continue to running, run during KExec and be able to pick up the IOMMUFD descriptors after KExec? And roughly, so we've added the little blob of text from the old kernel to the new kernel, so some mechanism to pass over state as well as to persist important um, bits of memory that are used by the hardware, such as page tables, so passing that from old kernel to new kernel, and that will then allow DMA to continue to run, the IOMMU to continue to run while the KExec <laughs> operation is happening. So that's the problem de description. If we want to take a if any clarification needed on that before we start getting onto roughly our sketch for how we're thinking of a way to solve this. Probably. But in, 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 not, you're not persisting the device, like you're questing the device at some boundary for the DMA, right? Like it's, no? No, we can't. Our, our devices, the devices that we have don't implement quiescent. Yeah, so if the guest VM initiates some DMA operation, that needs to, and the device is not being quiesced, it's doing that DMA operation while the host is doing a K-exec. Right, so, yeah. so the, the patches that Steve has just sent to do this without the K-exec, so he's just looking at re-execing QMU, so it's like a, you know, half, or a third of your problem. Um, but it is supposed to be completely hitless and non-disruptive, okay? Yeah. And I think there's some merit in looking at what Steve has done, maybe it gives you some inspiration um, I don't know, it's kind of different what you want to do. We have no mechanism to quest the devices. Right? No, no, nobody, yeah. nobody does. Yeah, exactly. Nobody does, that's not the point. Um, okay, cool. So, so roughly the way we're thinking of solving this is adding a new um, IOMMUFD option flag that you can set to say this is a persistent IOMMUFD. And when you, when you tag an IOMMUFD as persistent, when it creates hardware page tables and IO address spaces, those are also marked as persistent. Uh, and essentially that will then plumb this persistent flag through to the IOMMU platform driver, like Intel IOMMU, and say these page tables that you're allocating for this IOMMU domain, they need to be persistent, you need to persist your state, so we're kind of plumbing this persistence concept around from IOMMU FD to the IOMMU driver. And then, just before KExec, we use this framework which um, Alex has posted for, uh, it's currently in review on the mailing list, called KExec handover, and both IOMMUFD and the platform driver have serialized hooks where they write the necessary states to the uh, KHO device tree blob, which is this structured blob that's get passed from old kernel to new kernel, and they also mark their page tables as persistent memory so that they are not, they are kind of carved out of the um, address space of the new kernel and so that any data there is preserved, and KHO provides all that functionality. So why, why do you need to know in advance 
that they're persist going to be persistent if you're serializing. There the is end. a there is a reason, and maybe what we want to do is instead of just scattering page table pages all over the place, we want to use something like a memory pool concept and allocate page table pages from a pool, which gives you a much simpler and faster handover mechanism. Because you don't the way that these pages are reserved is through mem blocks, and you don't want to scatter mem block allocations all over the place. You would rather have fewer large contiguous chunks. Uh, an, an additional problem if you have those pages scattered everywhere is that might, there might be in the way of the new kernel. If the new kernel core is bigger and the BSS is bigger, you, it might collide into one of those pages. So by being able to pull them in one big chunk that you can kind of artificially ensure is out of the way, uh, you have the ability to, to solve those problems. I think there's a kind of an architectural question or a philosophical question you need to answer. Do you, do, you want, do you want to start out with everything allocated in memory that you can persist, like you're kind of running in place? Or do you want to do a serialized step where you copy it to where you want it to go? <coughs> you can do either. Um, if you put it in place, you still need to accommodate all the special things that the page table code is going to want. So you still need to give me like a struct page pointer and all of that for your mem block. So I don't know if that's going to cause you stress, but meh. It, it can all be done, but I, I feel like the the language of serializing is probably going to be more robust for you. There definitely right? is a serialized phase where just before kexec, the, the IOMMU driver and IOMMU FD get hooks and they write a bunch of states to um, the KHO blob, but the actual pages that are used for page tables, I don't think we want to serialize those. I we, think we keeping- can't. We can't. Why, why not? If we serialize those pages, then how would you initiate, okay. Let, let's take a, a first first step at, at KHO 101. Um, what, what does KHO actually provide you, right? KHO gives you effectively two concepts. It gives you a well-structured um, device tree-based, FTT-based um, blob to pass metadata, serialization, deserialization of state between uh, old kernel and new kernel, one, one big piece. The other big piece is it gives you a, a base mechanism that allows you to take random memory anywhere in, the, in, in, in your kernel address space and have that be freely served already in the new world with a bit of safety mechanism that allows you to circumvent the issues that Ben was talking about. So we, we serve a scratch region that allows yeah. this, 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 like that we don't do allocations in before. So yes, we can scatter them around in, um, uh, in memory, right? We can scatter those, those like page tables around. It just is less efficient. So there's a, a proposal from, from Microsoft to go into things well, like no, but uh, I'm asking about serialites. Like if I gave you an operation, like with the generic PT stuff I was talking about, if I gave you a generic op that said, copy the current page table to, you know, perfect <coughs> KHO memory, like would you be happy with that? Page table is live. It's, it's, it's that, that page table is live. It's in use by the hardware. You can't. Yeah. I'm not sure we want the latency of doing that in the live update path, because this is experienced by the guest yeah. as steal time of, you know, single-digit milliseconds in an ideal world. Right? We, we, can, we can probably hide some of that by, so, so another thing that I, I forgot to mention about KHO is it actually creates two phases of that, of KXX. Phase one is put the, the system into, into a immutable. almost immutable state, right, because you, you have to write out that device, you have to put it somewhere. Um, and only then perform the KXEC. And in between, you can still execute guests just fine. You just can't modify configuration of those. Yeah. Um, so we could also probably live with a copy to contiguous block kind of thing. We still want a hint because you don't want to preserve every single device most likely, do you? Well, if you got an operation, it would be like a user space triggered, you know, copy this domain to KHO. So you would decide which ones you want to copy, and when you do that, you'd also be committing to saying, I don't get to do map and unmap anymore after I've done this copy. Like, my, my environment is frozen. What's the benefit of doing that compared to saying, at IOMMU <sighs> allocation time, this is persistent? And another reason that I think it's you need to specify that, pers that persistent flag up front is you need to ensure that the, the data which is backing that IO address space is all persistent memory as well. You can't wrap, map random anonymous pages or file cache pages because those are all going to get blown away. And that's why we have another proposal for something called guest MFS, which is persistent memory that can be mapped 
in like an in-memory file system which survives across caves. Um, those points are good too. I, I'm just asking, like serialize is, a, is, to my mind, it's a simpler way to understand this and it requires kind of less intrusion maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe, right? Like if you can, you know, again, if we're in a generic PT world and you can go and mess with the allocator that's shared between all seven implementations to do your special thing, then maybe it's not a big deal at all, maybe. Let, let's talk through how this would work, right? cannot really make a call to the IOM UFD to say go and put yourself into cage O because cage O is not, doesn't exist. The, the, the flow to create that cage ODT and to actually serialize is initiated from the cage O world itself. Well, I mean, I assume you, you, you so said there were two phases. So I assume when you enter your first stage, you can start doing, you, you'd arrange it so you can start preparing cage O stuff, whatever that means, right? Getting your serialization done, do all your prep work while the guest is still able to run. Correct. Correct. So Which you should be able to put the data someplace safe. The okay. trigger is just cage O itself, right? So instead of triggering individually by each device, you would do one trigger and just say cage O, serialize yourself mm -hmm. now. And that would then trigger all of these other effects. But at that point, you need to know the piece of data, or that, that information that you, that you already, that you need to serialize that this is a, um, a cage O with this, which is fine, right? It just means that conceptually, instead of calling into IOM UFD to say, put yourself into cage O, you call into IOM UFD to say, make this IOM UFD be part of the group of IOM UFDs I want to create. That's just the only, only semantic notion that, that changes here, which means we would create a, an IOPTO that sets an option on an IOM UFD to say, make this yeah, persistent, yeah, yeah, yeah. which basically gets you to no, exactly no, no, the I, same thing, just that the only, the only constraint you're moving is that instead of doing it at, at creation time, you can do it any time it runs on it. Yeah, I'm but just thinking through, through the, the, the mechanics of the drivers under the surface, right? Because yeah, if, if you're going to give a completely new allocator yeah. that has completely new rules, that wants page clustering, like, are you going to severely compromise the way that all this stuff needs to work? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, but the nice thing not. about having that persistent flag up front is it gives you the ability to then say, okay, now we want to influence the allocation strategy. Whereas you can't do that if you make it a later, a later, see, later. See, decision. one of the appeals of serialize is that you can go and extend how much memory you need. And I can tell you, I need three megabytes of memory, and you can allocate it in a nice, convenient way for you. Like, I don't need to have a restricted allocation rule. I don't need to have, you know. And, and if you have infrastructure to do all this, then maybe it's not a big deal. But, like, when I think about it, I think, well, give me three megabytes of memory that I can persist. That seems like a natural, obvious thing that you want to provide as a guest memfd or something, right? Because you could have, like, a serialized to a guest memfd file if that's your model. No, because those would be in the hot path. This one we could we could put into a non-hot path, right? The other one is just like a decision. Okay. We also have more properties on guest manifest, but this is not what guest manifest is in business understood. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Yes. Oh, I don't. Oh, sorry, I didn't. It's like a directional mic. What only goes up here? Yeah, yeah it's pretty narrow. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Fair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And do after. Um, y yes, I'm. I'm happy to reconsider when when exactly we actually perform that that. Operation, but we need to have an operation that which is says this IOM UFD then will need to be persisted either very soon or from the beginning. So, and then again, on my other question is, do you mean the IOM UFD or do you mean specific hardware page tables and domains? So we want something. So basically, um, it is kind of the IOM UFD, right? Because what you want is after K exec for your VMM process like QMU to be able to pick up a file descriptor that looks and feels exactly like that IOM UFD did before K exec. It's got the same address spaces, it's got the same um, hardware page tables, you can do map and unmap operations on it. It's kind of, and that's why, so yeah, and basically the idea you can see from this slide is you set this option and then after K exec you can pick up that IOM UFD same file, same feeling file descriptor out of SysFS. So is that, is that really important? Or could you reconstitute it? Well, it reconstitutes itself. No, I mean, I'm asking as a choice, as a design choice, instead of having the kernel inst create something for you that's already set up, could you do manually like the iOS create, the hardware PT creates, the maps and the unmaps you, that you would you need can't, to get back? You, you can't because you need to use the exact old mappings until you are at a point where you can replace them. So yeah. you need to have uh, we, some no, no, way. So we have atomic replace in our, need, in our language. Have, correct, so you right. need to have some mechanism to understand this IOMU group was backed by this particular yeah. page table 
and now I want to go and either replace that page table with a completely ident identical copy after, yes. or I want to just con leverage and reuse the old, old page yes. table the way it is. This, this is what I said, it was a philosophical choice. So if you, if you do replace, so what I would imagine a replace flow would look like is you start with a, a normal page table that acts in the normal way, you freeze, you serialize it, you run in your serialized version, you then start up again, you create another copy from scratch that's, that's in your normal language, and then you replace again. So you have two replace operations, both hitless and atomic, but you, you flip from the operating mode to your serialized static mode, and then from your serialized static mode to your operating mode again. And I think that would be a lot less work for you because you don't have to go and reconstitute the, uh, all this other infrastructure. You just have your VMM right. go and recreate but it you're and then you're, atomic You're replace. kind of trusting or expecting user space to create everything properly. And one of, to like set it up exactly the same way as it was before, because you've actually got page tables that are being used there. You can't go and create random IOSs oh, because... No, no. I assume you have to trust the VM in all this operation, right? Like, you can't... Yeah. Well, why? I mean, it, I mean, isn't it better for the kernel to be responsible for that serialized, deserialized part than to give you something that looks I, the same? I, I kind of like his approach in a way because it's it limits the constraint on which specific type of memory can be used for the transition, specifically to the transition. Uh, the serialized, deserialized is the only part where you have potentially that constraint. And so you can start with normal pages anyway, and you finish with normal pages anyway. And uh, the anything special related to that persistent transition has only existed for the duration of that transition. That being said, uh, whether this is practically useful, it's hard to tell. Maybe in the context of outplugging uh, entire PCI segments, maybe. Uh, uh, and there is a cost, because there are gonna be a lot more copies of the page tables, of course, being done and all of this, so there's gonna be a performance cost. And you have to have twice as much memory for them. Y yes, and, reserved, so. yes. Yeah. And, and we know in the context. The price of page table memory yes. is one and, uh, and part of the problem... No, you won't do that at the same time. No, not, not at the same time. <laughs> not, 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 yeah, yeah. No, unless you do No, PLs, but it, right? the, the fact that we do, we are very, very, very sensitive to downtime during the k-exec transition of the hypervisor. And anything that's going to add milliseconds to that is bad. But I no, we can't. No, we can't. The first part we can because hide, right? So the, the, the initial copy we can hide. The second copy I don't think we can hide. Right. Because the second copy would be reconstructing those page tables, which is but worse. it's a, it's the same Use rule, right? You you start up in your new VMM, and it's in the that same everything is immutable and frozen. But I could run the guest, like I can't do map and unmap because I still have the serialized page tables in effect. But I can run the guest immediately, and then I go and I sit in my background and I bring myself back to my operational state. I get all my kernel objects, my KVM objects, all that stuff put back the way I want. So this is post-VMM resume, basically. Post-VMM resume, you can do yeah. This, yeah. It's okay. the same it, as flood migration. Look, it's very interesting. I'm just still struggling to see the benefit of that compared to getting the kernel to um, firstly persist your IMMU structure. Are you out of time? The, are we out of time? <laughs> okay. All right. The last, the last two things I want to say are, firstly, if you're interested in this, we've got a BOF session. It's either today or tomorrow. When is it? Tomorrow about preserving memory over k-exec. So please come to that if this is an interesting topic to you. And we have some RFCs out, KHO and this IMMU FD persistence thing, so I would appreciate comments there. It's very fresh, uh, Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no problem. But yeah, you are CC'd, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Cool, thank you. Thank you.